Well, at this time, we would like to invite all of our elementary age kids and down to come on down to the front. Y'all know the drill. Y'all came down for Christmas a few times. Y'all just come on down here and find a seat right around the stage. Anywhere will be fine. Not on the stage, just near it. And uh, if your child is young and you want to come, you can. If your child has severe behavioral problems, you can come also. <laughs> Either one of those will be fine. Come on down, don't be... Man, can we give them a hand this morning? They look super sharp. Super sharp. Man, I'm seeing bunny ears and I even see a few ties. I like that. Y'all are looking good this morning. And a Rubik's Cube, I think. That's great. Very exciting. Come on down, let's find a seat. Is that everybody? All right. Hey, are you guys glad to be in church today? Do you guys know why we are celebrating today? What's the big deal about Easter? Does anybody know? Ready? Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross, and what happened three days later? He rose from the dead. Man, that's right. Anybody know what this is behind me here? That's the tomb, isn't it? That is, well, it's a replica of the tomb. Or I should say, yeah, an example. It's not the actual tomb, of course. If it was, it would be super old. That's a very good observation. So, no, that is not, you got me there. That is not the real tomb, but it is a replica of the tomb. This is a lot like the tomb that Jesus was buried in and that he rose in three days later. And we want to put that up there so you could see it and imagine it. Now, this is a little bit harder question, though. Does anybody know who owned the tomb? Who owned the tomb and let Jesus' body be buried there? Miles knows. Okay, no. Mom says no. Don't call him Miles. We don't know what might be said. Okay, anybody know who owned the tomb? I can't call on you, son. I have to figure someone else. All right, right here. God owned the tomb. I think I could argue that. But the tomb was owned by a man named Joseph of Arimathea. He was a rich man. And when he found out that Jesus had died on the cross, he was like a almost a secret disciple of Jesus. And he said, I want to give... He had made this tomb for himself and his family, but he said, I want to give this tomb so that the Son of God can be buried in that tomb. And that was a sacrifice that he made. It was powerful. Now, I know you guys are pretty familiar with the Easter story, but I have a video that I want to show you this morning that's going to do a good job of, of telling that story and just kind of reiterating it, okay? So, are we ready to show that video? All right, let's, let's watch this video together of the Easter story. The story of Easter. Jesus' sacrifice. This is Jesus. hey Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. The Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the Son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus ah, come in, come in. and give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the son of God. You say that I am. 
and the council was furious and they shouted that Jesus was guilty and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seems okay to me. They found him to be innocent. So Pilate said that he would punish Jesus and then release him. Ah, 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 ah. Huh, what? But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on. His clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own. And then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, if you really are the son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, this man truly was the son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body and found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. <coughs> Don't be afraid, said an angel. He is not here. He is risen. At this, the woman remembered that Jesus had told them that he would rise again on the third day and ran to go tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. Huh? hey -oh. ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. He taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. All right. Man, wasn't that good? Praise God. Now, that video tells us the story of why Jesus, or, or of how Jesus died. It tells us the details. But the bigger question is, why did Jesus have to die? Do you guys know the answer to that question? Why did Jesus, I just want you to think about it. Just think about it for a minute. You don't have to answer. Just think. Why did Jesus have to die? What was he dying for? He needed to save a few people. Exactly. He needed to save all people. Actually, Jesus was dying in place of you. Now, you may not think that you deserve to die, but because we all have sin in our life, Jesus was dying in place of you, even though he had never sinned. Do you guys remember in the Old Testament where they used to sacrifice animals and shed the blood of animals, and that would pay a temporary sacrifice for sin. But when Jesus died on the cross, when they nailed him to the cross, and his blood was shed on your behalf, it took away your sin forever. Isn't that great? Isn't that good news? 
Let me ask you another question. Why, when Jesus died on the cross, why did that make you innocent before God? Why does that make you a son or daughter of God? Again, I just want you to think about it. How is it that when Jesus died on the cross, you became a son or daughter of God? Does anybody know the answer to that question? Man, several hands. We got all kind of kids. These are some smart kids. We got some parents doing a good job, apparently. Well, whenever Jesus died on the cross, the Bible teaches that he died in your place, and that gave you the right to become a son of God. Did you know that just like Jesus is the son of God, you're a son of God, you're a daughter of God, when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, and you believe in him, the Bible says? How many of you believe in Jesus? Let me see your hand raised high this morning. How many of you believe he was a son of God, that he was resurrected, rose from the dead? Then the Bible says that because of that, because you believe that, that you get to be a son or a daughter of God. Isn't that good? You can put your hands down. Now, let me ask you one more question. Where did sin even come from in the first place? Who knows? Who knows? Right here on the back row. Where did sin come? Okay, Adam and Eve. And what happened in the garden? Adam and Eve, what happened? The devil tricked them. If you don't like the devil, let me hear you say, boo. I don't like the devil. But guess what? The Bible says that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. He came to destroy the work. Hey, who are you? You know who I am. I am Lucifer. Boo. What are you doing here? Well, I'm here for Dylan. (gasps) Dylan? Yeah. Well, 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 Dylan, go, go ahead and come up here. I guess the way we can just figure this out, kind of figure out what's going on. Um, okay, so why are you here for Dylan? Mm. Well, because Dylan, you know, Dylan, it's guilty. <gasps> Dylan is guilty. Well, okay, what did Dylan do? Why is Dylan guilty? Oh, well, he lied. He stole some stuff. I got a long list. I could go on and on. No, uh, it's okay. We don't want you to go down the whole, the whole list. <laughs> um, okay, kids, we got to think about this. What are we going to do? What are we going to do here? Because we can't let Dylan go with him. We know that's not going to be good. So <laughs> come on, we got to come up with something. What can we do to help Dylan? Anybody got any ideas? Come on, just shout them out. What you got? Shout it out. Money, what? Money. What? Okay, did I hear somebody say money? I think we could trade some money. That's a great idea. If we had enough money, maybe we could buy Dylan back from this, and this wouldn't be as big a deal. Dylan doesn't have any money, but we could get enough money here. Would that work? How much money? What would it take? (laughs) Is that all Dylan is worth to you, one dollar? That's terrible. Okay. I say, say 10,000. 10,000. 10, what can we do with that? <laughs> $10,000? Yeah. Would that work? Nope. Nope. Going with me. Okay. I, I think we're going down the wrong track. I think we're going down the wrong track. I don't think money is going to do it. Okay. But I do have another idea. What if, what if we traded one of your pets? Like one of your dog or your cat? Who... Who would be willing to give one of their animals for Dylan? You, what do you have? A dog and a cat. If we traded, she's willing to give up her own pet, her dog and her cat for Dylan. Like would that dogs, work? I like cats. Dog and cat, would that nope. work? Nope. Okay. All right, something else. Come on, something else. We've got to figure something else. What? What? Wait a minute. What who said that? You can't, you can't trade your sister. That's terrible. That is so wrong. No, but but if we could, but if we could, could we trade a sister? Nope. For Dylan's going with me. Well, 
He said, what if you trade me? Whose kid is that? <laughs> uh, my goodness, raising him right. Okay, there's got to be something we can do, though, right? There's something we can do. No, nothing you can do. Dylan is guilty, and he is going to spend an eternity with me forever. Now, boys, take him away. No, take we him can't away. do that. Take him wait, away. Wait a minute. You take him take away. Dylan. Okay, wait. Time out. Freeze. Just stop right there. Okay. Just everybody calm down. Now, let me just get this straight. You're saying Dylan sinned. Yes. And because he sinned, he's guilty. Precisely. And because he's guilty, he has to spend eternity with you? Yes. Haven't you read in Romans chapter 6, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Well, I have read that. But I've also read in Isaiah chapter 53 that he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And that by his stripes we are healed. No, Like sheep, we have all gone astray. Everyone has gone their own way. But the Lord has laid upon no. him the iniquity of us all. No! Your name cannot be overcome. Oh. Your name is life no. forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Jesus. Come on, let's stand on our feet this morning. You make the darkness Praise God. Simple, Jesus, Come on, kids, Jesus. stand up this morning. Come on, let's worship God for just a minute. Oh, thank you, God. Come on, let's lift our hands to Him. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you so much for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. Thank you that you took our place, even though that we were guilty. You took our place so that we could be in heaven with you for eternity. We worship you, Father, this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's give Jesus one more hand this morning. Praise God. Okay, you guys can be seated just for a minute right there where you're at. Now listen, everybody listen real closely. We were joking when we were talking about trading money, pets, sisters. But Jesus really did trade his life for yours. You were guilty and you would have had to spend eternity in hell with Satan. But Jesus Christ gave his life for you. And that's what Easter is all about. Our Lord and Savior defeated Satan. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. And he was resurrected again by the power of God. All because he loves you. Amen. Let's bow our heads together right where we're at this morning.